hello guys and welcome to my youtube channel my name is clementina and today i'm going to cover the topic uh, of basal metabolic rate this is a very important component of the human metabolism and could be the key to why you're not losing weight or the key to why you have regained all of the weight that you have already lost and i am aiming with this video to help you understand what is holding you back and what can you do in order to improve that so let's get into it you've probably heard of the term a damaged metabolism so what is a damaged metabolism this is an adaptive response of your metabolism which um, has preserved our race for thousands of years our human bodies are not stupid otherwise if this mechanism was not existent we would probably have already ceased to exist as a species so that means that our caveman ancestors, when they had no food for days on end and they were not managing to catch anything or there were severe weather conditions, their metabolic rate would then slow down in order to preserve all of their bodily functions, in order for them not to die. Specific phenomenon also helped uh, periods of severe starvation, uh, such as like uh, post-war periods where people would basically have limited amounts on food for longer periods of time and mainly grains. According to some research that I found, people were consuming like 800 calories a day uh, in these post-war times. However, today we are presented with uh, basically unlimited amounts of food and this adaptive response is no longer of any use to us really but our bodies still undergo that when we put them in severe caloric restrictions when you decide to go on that severe caloric deficit and eat let's say a thousand calories per day or whatever your my fitness plan app tells you to do then your body adapts to that so it would slow down your metabolic rate and reduce the amount of energy that you need in order to preserve all of your functions uh, however, you're not aiming to do that. You're aiming just to lose the weight, but your body doesn't understand that. This is the reason why at some point you hit a plateau and then you cannot lose any weight anymore. Like because you keep ingesting the same amounts of food over time, it's the same caloric restriction, but your metabolic rate had slowed down to that point. And this is basically the amount of food that your body has already learned to maintain itself on. Like, you cannot lose weight. You have to either reduce the food that you're ingesting or you have to pump up the physical activity. So, what can you do about that? The thing that your body is slowing down is your basal metabolic rate. And the basal metabolic rate is a component of your total energy expenditure. Your total energy expenditure is uh, the amount of energy that your body requires per day for all of its functions. The basal metabolic rate is the energy that your body requires just to maintain all of its vital functions. So to breathe, to digest, and basically every other function of your organs. You have the physical activity, this is self-explanatory, this is any activity besides you laying in your bed. And you have the thermal effect of food. And your basal metabolic rate makes up between 60 and 70 percent of your total energy expenditure. So it's the most important component. You would want to do everything possible to preserve those 60 to 70 percent at the level that they already are at the start of your weight loss journey. What probably has happened to you if you clicked on this video is that you have now damaged your metabolism. You find it harder to lose weight, although you're not eating as much before you went on the diet. You can calculate your basal metabolic rate. There are formulas available online for you to do that. One example is the Harris Benedict formula, and it takes into account three main components, which are your age, your weight, and your height. The age factor is important because your metabolism tends to decrease, in age, it tends to slow down due to changes in body composition, organ functions, and so on. And your weight and height is just like, the bigger you are, the more energy you would require just to exist. However, these uh, formulas need to be uh, really taken with a grain of salt because they are not applicable to everyone, especially if you deviate from the average. Let's say that you're really physically active. Or let's say that you're really slim. There was actually one study that was done on individuals. There were three groups, uh, slim individuals, 
athletic and full slim and then their basal metabolic rate was calculated with this formula uh, and then they were also subjected to this intervention it's called indirect calorimetry and it's like the golden standard for measuring your basal metabolic rate you cannot do this at home you need to go to an institution to perform this um, procedure the accuracy of the formula was its lowest with the athletic group and the best with the full slim group slim group also had the highest percentage of fat mass so uh, you see how if you deviate like from the average then also these uh, formulas these estimates not really apply to you it makes no sense at least for me if you deviate from this average just to buy one of those scales that can measure everything like it can also measure you your bmr on it like those with the you know metal strips that you stand on them and they tell you like your bone mass your fat mass, your water weight, and everything that you can think of. So just uh, save your money on that and use this calculation for some information. Or if you really want to know the truth, you need to look up indirect calorimetry as an intervention and go and do that procedure. I actually did my bachelor's thesis on BMR and I was looking into diets and approaches to eating that would impact the human metabolism. There was not a lot of research on the topic, let's say, but what really stood out were all of the studies that were done on ketogenic diets and high protein diets and also intermittent fasting. So there were like three main diet approaches that really positively influenced the preservation of the basal metabolic rate. In all of these studies, people underwent weight loss interventions, like they were put on a caloric deficit and some kind of workout regime, and then they had either the ketogenic diet as an approach, or they had like a high protein diet as an approach, or they had intermittent fasting as an approach. Intermittent fasting is not really a diet. If you have not really heard of it, it is a, a more of a eating pattern. And you have these eating windows in which you are not allowed to eat. So you could have like a 16 hour no eating window or like a 20 hour window or something like this. And then you have like a short amount of time in which you're supposed to ingest all of your daily calories. All of these three diets had some positive impacts, but there was one very common thing among all of them, uh, and that was the preservation of the lean mass. The lean mass, or fat-free mass, as described in the studies, is mostly your muscle mass. Your muscle mass is more metabolically active than your adipose tissue. Uh, adipose tissue is uh, your fat tissue. And the muscle mass just requires more energy to be maintained Having more muscle mass would mean that your body requires more energy and therefore you can also eat more. And the best results out of all of the studies were found also uh, when high protein diets were in place. And high protein and ketogenic are kind of similar. Like all of these three diets have some sort of similarities because a ketogenic diet, if you're not familiar with it, you ingest foods that are very low in carbs and high in proteins and fats. And if they're high in proteins, uh, then that would be similar to the high protein diet. It's just that on the high protein diet, you can consume some more carbs than on the ketogenic diet. But in both cases, you're ingesting a lot of protein. This protein would that also help you preserve the lean mass. So you see how just eating more protein helps you maintain better metabolic functions. Secondly, the intermittent fasting. This also has a similar aspect to the ketogenic diet. Because during these no eating windows in the intermittent fasting, uh, you, your body goes into the state of ketosis, which is also the state that you are in during the ketogenic diet. In this state, you have already used up all of the carbs that you had as an energy source, and your body turns to fats. And with intermittent fasting, uh, these are the fats that you already have stored. And with the ketogenic diet, these are like the fats that you're ingesting throughout the day. You're just using up fats instead of carbohydrates. And one more important thing that they found is, is that when you're in a state of ketosis, there is this other compound that is, that is released into the blood, which is beta-hydroxybutyrate, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this compound uh, helps you regulate your hunger hormones. There was a correlation found, like in an inverse correlation, with the amount of uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate and also the amount of ghrelin 
ghrelin is your hunger hormone and it was found to be going down when uh, this uh, compound was higher. These diet approaches can help you regulate your hunger levels and therefore help you maintain your diet. There were also some studies that were on specific compounds, uh, specific supplements that uh, promise to help you improve your metabolism are supplements containing caffeine because caffeine is said to enhance the functions of your nervous system and have a temporary impact on your thermogenesis, so the energy that you burn. However, this impact is so short, it was found that this thermogenic impact occurs after three hours of ingestion. The half-life of caffeine is five hours. And the half-life, for those of you who are not familiar, is the amount of time the, your body requires to metabolize and to get rid of half of everything that you have ingested of this compound. So half of the caffeine is gone from your system in five hours and this effect sets on in three hours, which is why I believe that it is not a sufficient metabolism boosting strategy and that taking these supplements is not going to have a great impact on your weight loss. Like the impact on the thermogenesis is there, but it is not effective single weight loss strategy. Secondly, some of these supplements also contain EGCG, which is a compound that is found in green tea. It is found to work uh, synergistically with caffeine, so it boosts the effects of caffeine. And again, it's the same effect that you would get from caffeine, just a bit enhanced. And I do not believe that it is worth your money. And there are other things that uh, you can switch up in your diet that would make a greater impact than taking these supplements. On the topic of diet, again, as I already briefly mentioned, there is the thermal effect of foods, which makes up between 10 and 50% of your total energy expenditure. The thing is, each macronutrient requires some energy to be metabolized and digested and then utilized in your system. So the carbohydrates require 10 to 15% of the energy that they already contain to be metabolized. Uh, fats require the least amount of energy. They require around um, 5 to 10%. And proteins, on the other hand, are the winners with 20 to 30% of the energy that they possess. This energy is then being used for their own metabolism because with proteins, they're the more complicated compound to be utilized. They need to be broken down to amino acids and then built up again for the proteins in your body. This takes up a lot of energy and resources. And again, this could also contribute to the positive impact that uh, generally high protein diets have on your health and uh, your metabolism as well. To sum up everything said in this video, the research was most conclusive on high protein diets and they were the ones that were uh, definitely influencing the weight loss journey of the individuals positively. So if you want to just have one take from this video, then it would be just to eat a sufficient amount of protein and that should be enough to improve your metabolic health. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I helped you with something with this video and I'll see you next time.